아프리카 스타크래프트 잠시 소닉팀에 함께하고 있습니다 7차 스파비자 리그 4강의 에이저 세 번째 경기인데요 현재 스코어 1대 1입니다 어떤 경기 나올지 품은 1.1인데요 이봉기 선수가 여기서 프로토스가 굉장히 유리하다라는 이 맵에서 어떠한 경기를 볼수 있을지 품은 매 바로 가보도록 하겠습니다 하나 하나 둘셋 이봉기 하나 둘셋 All right, we are going into game number three. The score is one to one between Sky and Larva. Sky will be the yellow Protoss at the top right. Larva, the red Zerg, at the top left. I believe we are on s no Wind and Cloud. Is Wind and Cloud the third map or Sniper Ridge? The last three maps all have the same tall set, so it's a little bit confusing. Hold on, let me check here. I have no idea. I have no idea, so I'll just, I'll just wait and see. <coughs> anyway. So. Here. We. Go. I just realized, they're playing on widescreen monitors, aren't they? I wonder whether, uh... Actually, I guess, yeah, they can just full screen it, but have it at proper resolution anyway, with some fix thing. Isn't there a fix so that you can have it at proper resolution, even if you use a widescreen monitor? I think there is. I think there is. She's like falling asleep, what the hell? <coughs> I hope she at least gave juice to somebody. Like, been useful in some way. It is getting a little bit creepy. We're like approaching, you know, pro league camera guy levels of creepiness. Whoa! One base build, hello. Le Protoss is doing one base something. And we have a 12 hatch from uh, from Larva. So Larva doing basically the full range of Zerg openings here. Overpull game one, nine pull game two, and then 12 hatch game three here on Wind and Cloud. Now, if anyone doesn't know, Wind and Cloud is in fact uh, a map that was created by Rose of Dream, the Gosu Korean map maker who uh, made maps for Pro League and. OSL, I guess. I don't know. He made maps for somebody. <laughs> and uh, and then Sonic asked him to make some maps for this league. So he made, uh, I think, four or five maps. And they look pretty cool. And apparently Wind of Dream... Or sorry. Wind... Wind and Cloud, rather. <laughs> Wind and Cloud was the was the most uh, most popular, I guess. Or the most balanced. So that's been chosen to be used in the league. <clears throat> so we have Fighting Spirit, three uh, Pro League maps, and this custom uh, Sonic Star League map in the map pool. Anyway, so the first one going over here, just gonna see 12 patch. I think we can get, take quite a few uh, spits from that drone before getting in there. <coughs> Meanwhile, um, the drone scout of uh, of Larva went cross map first and then went to the top right, so now he knows where his opponent is and he now knows it is in fact a one base build. And I don't actually know what building that is at the top there. Is that just a Stargate? I assume that's just a Stargate. <coughs> But uh, I guess we'll see. I mean, Stargate, yeah, it's definitely got to be a Stargate. Um, so what is he actually going for here? Is he just going like the Ser DT expand opening off one base here? You can make like one Corsair, uh, one Dark Templar, and just safely get an expand up. You just got to kill, <coughs> kill the Overlord that's next to your base. Or something like that. <coughs> I hope he's going Scout Goon, just to justify my entire existence. Nope, he's getting a Citadel. Alright, no scout gooning. That's fine. <laughs> so, interesting. I thought, uh, wasn't Wind and Cloud good for Protoss? Maybe it's not. Maybe I'm remembering it wrong. I have a feeling somebody said this is good for Protoss. So I'm a little bit surprised that he's going for uh, this kind of uh, non-standard opening here. I mean, doing a one-base opening, you know, with Serdt into expand is not that unheard of. 
But, I mean, there's a reason that everybody forged fast expands nowadays. You know, one base openings are generally less effective uh, than, than just the fast expands. Uh, I mean, depend. I guess you know, with some map exceptions, maybe some funky maps allow for uh, for the one base play better. But it looks like uh, Larvas responded by just getting the fast Hydra den and uh, getting some Hydras to ward away that Corsair. Of course, he had already planted the third hatcher. I think before he knew it was a one base build, so he couldn't do any two hatch craziness. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So it looks like Corsair just gonna run around and pick off what Overlords it can. And he's actually made a second Corsair here, as well as, uh, I mean, the second gateway is not unusual, but that second Corsair, I'm not sure if that's really necessary in this build. I mean, you're, you're pretty gas-starved on just one base going for Dark Templars, <clears throat> and I think just getting the one Corsair is enough here. I mean, it's not like he's going to have Overlord speed or anything, so, you know, going out, killing that Overlord that was at the 9 o'clock, and he could just bring this first Corsair back to kill the, to kill the Overlord in his base. It's really unlikely that he'll get any additional Overlord, so... I don't really see the point of getting that fast second Corsair as well. Um, I, in fact, I think used to do this, and, and then somebody told me it was wrong, and I actually realized that it is, in fact, not doesn't quite make that much sense. But anyway, it's not bad by any means. Uh, you know, just to uh, cost you an extra hundred gas there when you're only mining one gas. And when you see the probe of the natural, going to expand in good time. What are these overlords doing? Okay, so he's gonna get one more overlord, but because Larva is doing something weird there, I think he's just trying to move his overlords across the map so he can start putting on some pressure, but oh man, he's actually doing a lot more damage than I thought. Okay, he's actually made a third Corsair here. He's actually going all out, and actually, wait a minute, where's that probe? Okay, there it is. So that's a relatively late expansion following three Corsairs here from this opening. I don't think I've quite seen this variation uh, in, in PvZ before, and Larva is just walking three o slow overlords across the map. Is it... like what? Is he really just gonna try and bust him with slow overlords? I mean this... There's three Corsairs here, this is not ideal. Maybe maybe he was thinking the same thing that I was, that it's unlikely that the Protoss is going to make you know more than one or two Corsairs tops. And now there's three Corsairs running around, he's got all these slow overlords on the map. This this can't be good. I mean, he's not getting a lair, so he's not going to have overlord speed anytime soon. He actually just is trying to keep these overlords alive to do something. This is just bizarre. And he doesn't actually have any anti-air defense, like, he doesn't have any spore colonies or anything, so he actually had to keep a lot of Hydras back. So now these Hydras are finally coming in here, but there's only one half-health Overlord left here, and looks like, uh, Sky's actually just trying to take it down with the Dragoon, he is gonna get it, so the Overlords are all dead. Sky sacrificing his two Zealots and a Dragoon just to make sure the Overlord would not get to his base here. He realized the danger, he realized if that Overlord actually did get to his base, he might be in a tiny bit of trouble from all these Hydras, but now the Hydra's not really going to do too much here. That DT's going to stop him. He needs to actually stop those Hydras from running into the main, because that would be exceptionally annoying. Uh, but no, it looks like the DTs are a bit too much, so the Hydra's going to have to back up here, and... <clears throat> man, Scott Larvas is continuing with this line, he's just going for it with more slow Overlords here. I don't know if he feels like he's committed already, but I think he might have just lost already. I don't I don't think he can actually do anything anymore. I think he's actually dead. Because he chose a really strange response here to that build. I mean even if it was like just, you know, the single Corsair opening, I'm not sure if this necessarily works. It might work. It'd be cool if it works, you know? I mean, the flip side is that Sky doesn't see what's coming, he doesn't make three Corsairs, and he actually gets owned by a slow Overlord push, and he and Larva looks like a genius, you know? But unfortunately for Larva, this time it just didn't quite work out, and now he just looks silly. So, yeah, the natural's up and running, you know, there's no third base for the Zerg, he's got no tech, he's got no lair, not even started a lair, you know, he's just got Hydras, he just has to win with Hydras now. And the only way that's going to happen is if somehow a slow overlord makes its way all the way from his natural to the Protoss natural. And by this point, even if that happens, like there's already cannons up in the natural and stuff. I mean, High Templars with Storm are probably on their way. Looking very, very grim. Yep, there's the first High Templar. <clears throat> so basically, as soon if if he gets two storms up before the Hydras hit, it's there's zero chance. If the Hydras can get there before the storms are done, he has like a small chance. Actually, that is a shit ton of Hydras. He actually really needs a Storm now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! 
Where's the storm at? Oh, there's a storm. There we go. Yeah. This is probably fine now. Meanwhile, it looks like a, a DT and a Corsair, or the rest of the Corsair is trying to do something at the third. This guy actually not paying attention, so losing the rest of those. Uh, there's another storm there. Oh, oh, that is so painful. So he's going to grab another uh, cannon there, but oh, losing the majority of the Hydras there. Only three Hydras left. His third base did get defended there, and I think he killed all the Corsairs, so that's a small victory for him, but um, it's a bit late. Although, there are more Hydras coming out here. I mean, this is a bit of a tense moment here for the Perdos, just because he's still, you know, he's getting all his gateways up now. He's just starting to really get that, uh, get that macro going, but... Uh, as long as he can hold on for the next, you know, minute or so, and those gateways finish, he should be fine here. Um, Larva just really trying to make it work. Nice split against that storm, actually. I think there's no more storms here. Oh my god, is Larva actually going to take this down with these Hydras? No! No! No way! Oh man, the probes are coming off the line, but there's no more storm here. Still two cannons shooting in the back, one more cannon in the back. The probes are trying to fight. He needs those gateways to finish, he needs to just like spam speed lots or something here. Oh man, <laughs> these Hydras are actually doing a ton of damage. There's still 8 Hydras left it looks like. I don't actually know what they should shoot right now. It looks like they're killing some probes here. Maybe just target down the Nexus or something. Focus down the Nexus. <coughs> man, Sky only made 2 cannons there, that was pretty dubious. He's had like 4 cannons in the beginning, I think it would've been fine. Anyway, he is just gonna spam out units now, but I cannot believe this is happening. Sky probably feels so stupid right now. I mean, he had this in the bag. Oh, that was bad. That was horror bad. Oh, man. I kind of know how this feels, though. I'm pretty sure most Pro Elves players have had this happen to them, where like, they hold off like some weird Hydra bus timing. I mean, you know, not not the whole you know slow Overlord push thing, but you know, you know, sometimes you know the Berserk goes for a three-hatch Hydra bus or something, and you're like, you, you barely hold it off with enough cannon, and you're sitting pretty, you're like, yeah, you're feeling good about yourself, and then you know, it just comes in with a second wave of Hydras, and you know, you miss a couple of storms, and you're just like, shit, and you die, you die because Zerg is stupid, ugh. So, Larva is gonna take game on three here. Even though he really shouldn't. <laughs> he really shouldn't. Oh, this is so silly. Uh, there's still no Overlord speed. Is there a lair somewhere? Is there still no lair? I hope, I hope Larva wins this game without starting a lair. It'd be pretty cool. So the natural nexus is down. I think there might be enough units from the from these mass gateways that he can like defend his main. But what's he gonna do on one base? I don't know. Actually, Larva's attack is petering out a little bit. Because the thing is, like, even though Larva took the nine o'clock, he's not lying there, and he's been losing overlords this whole time. Maybe I should stop calling this game. Maybe. Can can Sky actually come back here? He's getting very close to mind out. I, I don't know if it's even worth taking the natural again. In these small numbers, um, Larva can do a pretty good job dodging storms as well, I think. He should probably focus down some High Templar. Actually, no, he's just going to take down Zelts and then just get the High Templar for free. Uh, I don't know why there's a drone here. Is he really going to make a hatchery? Please don't make a hatchery. I don't think he's won the game yet. I think that's a mistake. I don't think he's actually going to make a hatchery here. Because he hasn't won the game. He actually needs to be very careful. So that, that drone actually bites the dust here. But yeah, as I said, in these small numbers, uh, it's pretty hard to get you know effective storms off. Although it looks like just not quite enough hydras left. So Larva's gonna back up here, but again, you know he's got three bases against the, the Protoss's one. Even if he's not mining from his third at, at the moment, uh, it's still there's still a lot of pressure on on Sky, and he's gonna make a good decision here. You know, Can, if he if he tries to make a nexus now, he's not gonna have enough you know any money to actually uh, reinforce this little attack here. So. This is, he's just moving out, really spread out here. I don't know what, what he's thinking there, but oh, this DT. This DT could be a saving grace here. Sky, Larva's not paying attention. He's got Hydra's in position, but he's not paying attention. He's going to lose five drones. And there's no overload speed, so that, that DT could actually still stay alive for a little bit. Meanwhile, the Zelt's moving in, but there's enough Hydra's to defend. Looks like a couple over, more overloads going to go down here. Larva just seems to despise overload speed here. You know, screw lair upgrades. This game is actually just bizarre. 
<laughs> I just saw Larva's fall too. I mean, Sky, Sky kind of made a bad, like a bad move there to only make two cannons and also just add all those gateways a little bit late. But I mean, Larva just playing really weird this game. Anyway. Wow, that was a sick split. Do you guys see that? He took like he took like one Hydra kit death on two storms there with like two control groups. That was sick. That that was like that's like that highlight reel, you know where like Oof splits his marines against lurkers? Ah man, that was cool. That was sick. Unfortunately I think he still doesn't have enough to actually move in. And two remaining Corsairs gonna poke around. I don't know what they're doing. So the natural is back up, and Zerg's on three bases. Are we actually going to have a long game here? Are we seriously going to have a long game after that opening? I think we are, because I don't think either player is really willing to commit too much to an attack anymore. It's gotten a little bit too uh, too dangerous for that. I really wish he would get overload speed, though. Please, for the love of God, just get overload speed. <laughs> oh, man. Dude. Lair upgrades, they're pretty good. Watch him get like Overlord's Sight Range upgrade first, just to, you know, be that guy. I wonder if anybody's ever gotten Overlord's Sight upgrade in a, in a pro game before. I highly doubt it. It'd be funny. Maybe in one of those, you know, super late game situations where you have infinite money and you're just like, ah, I might as well get every single upgrade ever. So, looks like another DT, just gets a couple of drone kills there. Not too big a deal. And more random Sloverlords gonna get killed here. I wonder how many Overlords have died this game already. Probably a ridiculous number. And that's a pretty scary uh, Pearl's Army actually, because there's no Lurkers here for Larva. So he actually has, is gonna have a difficult time dealing with this uh, speed lock composition, because there's a bunch of High Templars in the back as well. He'll try and run around with his Hydras, but like he doesn't even have any good SimCity to fall back to. He just only has Hydras here, and this is a little bit too big of a, of a force to just micro against as well, so this is actually looking dangerous, but no, he does have Lurkers! Wow, just in the nick of time, and there are no Observers with this army, and moving down that now ramp is not going to work, so actually, wow, Larva's going to hold this. Is, is Sky going to try and storm them down? No, he's just going to try and get a pot shot there on the Hydras, but he's going to have to back up here, so Larva, oh, he tried to flank, but it looks like got a little bit caught, and good storms on the Hydras, but again, those Lurkers are going to force the Protoss army back here and do good damage on those clumped Zealots. Uh, meanwhile, it looks like the Observatory is finished, but the main is mined out, so the Protoss is back down to just one base, just his, one, uh, just his natural there. Of course, he was mining extra probes on that main for a while after losing his natural in the first place. So, uh, so that got mined out super quick. And I don't know what his, his best decision here is. I mean, he's still got a decentish army on the map. It's a little bit difficult. I mean, the lurkers are great defensively. They're a little bit diff more difficult to, uh, to to push forward with here for larvae. He doesn't have too big of an army still. So perhaps uh, it's a good opportunity for uh, for Sky to try and uh, expand here to perhaps a nine o'clock, I suppose. Uh, yeah. I don't actually know this map perfectly, but uh, yeah, it looks like that would be the logical choice now. Meanwhile, one course, they're just going to poke around and see what's going on. Nothing too interesting. And yeah, looks like he is in fact going to take the 3 o'clock base there. Now, interestingly, neither player actually has any upgrades. They're all 0, 0, 0. You know, normally by this point, the Protoss is at least plus 1, oftentimes plus 2 attack. Uh, and the Zerg might have a, an upgrade, like an attack upgrade for his Hydras as well, but... Uh, but, you know, the game's been so scrappy, so back and forth. You know, the Zerg doesn't even have an evolution chamber, and the Protoss lost his forge earlier in the bust. Actually, wait, no, he's got his forge in his main, so actually I'm not sure why he's not upgrading. He does have the forge in his main, doesn't he? Because he didn't do a forge fast expand. So, that's interesting. Uh, I should probably work on that. But, uh, Larva actually taking a hidden base here at the bottom left main. There is something moving down there. I wonder if it's like, just a Zealot or a DT or something. But whatever it is, it's going to spot that base for, uh, for Sky. That's not going to be ideal. It looks like it is, in fact, a DT, so that's probably going to have to be cancelled here. There's no way uh, I think that uh, that Larva can actually defend this. Yeah, he's just going to cancel that immediately. 
Um, so that hidden fourth base gambit uh, not quite working out, but he's not moving out across the map with a pretty big army. Although the Pearl's army is uh, nothing to uh, to scoff at there. There's four high templars in that composition. He's got to make sure he uses those before the lurkers actually kill the high templar here, using a couple of storms to take down those initial lurkers. I think he might have been better off saving them for the clumped hydras here. And there's more lurkers in the back actually. So it looks like uh, Pearl's army is going to get forced back here a little bit. I guess the high templars are out of energy now. He's going to retreat onto the high ground here. Four more high templars though coming out from the natural, and that's going to be enough for the Pearl's army to actually push back here against the Zerg. Oh man, those uh, those additional four storms are going to be hugely useful here. Looks like he's going to try and get a better position here, not just run headlong into those lurkers. More reinforcements coming out for Larva, and this game is actually turning out to be really amazing after the opening there. I mean, at first, you know, I was like, oh, you know, first, first Sky definitely had it, and then Larva definitely had it, and now neither player, I think, is, uh, is too far ahead of the other. These engagements are just so... So tense here. I think Protoss is going to take it just barely, though, with a couple of lurkers remaining. Is he going to try and do it, take him down? No, more Hydras coming in from the back. He's just going to macro as hard as he can here. By the way, he still hasn't taken his third. The 3 o'clock base still has not been taken. He's just using every last mineral to make units here just to hold off this endless stream of Zerg. This guy cannot afford to take that third base, but he kind of has to, though, because he's still operating on just a single base here. He can't stay on just his natural expansion for too long here. You know, Zerg is still on three bases, and I think Larva might just out macro him, out produce him, and Larva is pushing it back. There's only one High Templar left. There's a lot of Hydras left, and Sky is in big trouble. He's got a few zones coming out from the 3 o'clock. I don't know what they were doing there, but he's got not very many forces left. That DT is being a hero. There's no detection there. That DT is doing maximum damage. But man, it looks like actually Sky is barely holding on. Larva decides to retreat, surprisingly enough. I thought with those lurkers there, at least he just fall back to the lurkers with the hydras and keep holding that position, keep the pressure on, prevent the Protoss from taking his third. But notice how he just pulls back a little bit, gathers up his forces, maybe go, is going to go in for a second round here. What a scrappy game! Oh man, and and the Star Girl. I you know what? I'm just going to give her the benefit of the doubt and assume she's watching the Afrika stream on her phone. Because she can't really watch anything from that angle, so she's like really into it. She's you know listening to Sonic commentating and everything. She's gonna, we're just gonna go with that. <laughs> Meanwhile, another attempted at DT harass here is gonna get denied by a lurker that's actually been left in the middle line. I actually quite like that move there. Um, kind of like a, a Zerg static defense there instead of a sunken colony, you just leave a lurker. <coughs> anyway, it looks like Pronos Army has managed to. Uh, reclaim that little bit of area outside the natural and yet uh, the third base has still not gone up here and this is becoming increasingly worrying. Looks like Larva actually assumed it was there and has just moved his entire army to go attack it and yet he just realizes it's just a single cannon there so you can actually move everything back. He doesn't actually need to worry about it. You maybe just leave a single lurker there to keep denying that base. I don't actually know what Sky can do right now. Um, because, you know, normally you'd look at this situation and you'd be like, well, you know, Protoss got his main and his natural, and Zerg's got three bases, so that should be fairly even. But because of the opening and how quickly the main was mined out, it's actually slightly different now. It's a bit of a weird situation, where I think actually, you know, the pressure is in fact on Sky to really get this base up, and I really like how Larva is just keeping the attack up here. You know, in the Team Liquid preview article, it's talked about how he has a very kind of defensive style here and kind of tries tries to overrun you uh, in the mid to late game once he's got a good economic position. But uh, in this case, he's being super aggressive here. I mean, I think he does have a decent drone count on those three bases, but still, just non-stop attacking here with his army, just trying to finish off the Protoss. And it's it's really working. It's really pushing Sky to the limit. Uh, whoa, looks like a couple of good storms off. Man, Larva has some really good storm dodging though this game. I gotta say, this storm dodging is probably, if he wins, that would have won the game for him. But no, it looks like actually this time, the Pearl's army is a bit too strong here. Larva actually gets crushed, even though he looked okay, but there was a Lurker drop in the natural or something. No, Lurkers ran into the natural. It wasn't a drop. He just ran in, I think. He just ran around the cannon. There's only a single cannon there. There was 16 kills on that one Lurker. Sky is no longer mining. Oh my god, even though Sky won the huge engagement, he was not paying attention to his natural, lost all of his bros except like five. Oh my god, what a sick move by Larva, I cannot believe it. I thought after losing that big engagement there, he might suddenly be in trouble, but no. Once again, this game is just so many ups and downs for both players. Now Ling's running into the third, taking down those two cannons. 
no base for you. Now the thing is though, Pearl's army is still pretty substantial, but more links running into the natural here. Larva now just trying to buy some time. He knows that his army is a little bit weaker compared to the Pearl's now. Uh, so he's just trying to run around, be as cost efficient as possible, be annoying as possible with these links. Gets a free Archon with these Zerg Zerglings. It's doing an amazing job here. There's no more cannons here at the front, so uh, it's just super annoying because now uh, every time there's a, a Ling attack like this, he has to actually you know send units over to deal with it. More Ling's actually running into the third, but it looks like the main army is there, so uh, not going to be able to do too much. Man, but I think that attack on those probes there might have been the deciding factor here in the late game. You know, Larva's actually running very, very thin on his main as natural. He's essentially mined out now on both his main as natural. He'll be down to just that uh, 9 o'clock base, but no, he's actually taking a hidden expansion here at the 6 o'clock. But even without that base, I mean, he's just completely uh, obliterated the economy of the Pearl. So it's like, finally, Sky is deciding he is uh, strong enough to take that third. But, uh-oh, looks like his forces are a little bit split here. He had half his army at the three at his third, half his army just holding that uh, ramp there. But a big storm on the clumped lurkers, though. And this time, Larva not really dodging properly, not spreading his units properly. Gets most of his lurkers obliterated by the storms. But he's got a lot of units running to the natural. The Pearl's army is actually now stuck outside the natural. And he might just lose his natural nexus before he can get back to defend it. And GG for... From Sky Larva takes game number three. Wow, what a sick game. Oh my god. Larva takes it down. Sky, I think, should have had it there in the beginning, but it was not enough.